About a year ago, uh, I had the uh, opportunity to go to San Antonio uh, to the Festival of Homiletics. Uh, homiletics is a kind of a fancy word for preaching, uh, and the festival was uh, a week-long festival. Uh, great preachers from around the United States were invited to come to this place uh, and uh, uh, preach. It was a great honor to be invited to do that. Uh, I was invited to come and listen. Uh, it uh, cost me $250 to register for that, but it was uh, well worth it because uh, uh, I love great preaching. I love great preaching. Uh, the preaching took place uh, in two places there in San Antonio. One part was the uh, Travis Park United Methodist Church, and the other was the Scottish Rite uh, Theater. Both of these uh, places were uh, in the historic section of, of uh, uh, San Antonio, not far from the Alamo. And, uh, and so one uh, particular morning as I uh, arrived to the Scottish Rite Theater, I, was, I went up the steps and I went in and, and uh, I saw this woman in there. Um, it was crowded, but, but this woman stood out. She was tall, slender. She had on a, a black uh, tank top looking uh, uh, outfit, uh, uh, had spiked hair, uh, had tattoos down both, uh, both uh, arms, uh, odd tattoos. Uh, they were old religious symbols or, or uh, conographs, if you will. Uh, they were, uh, uh, one was uh, angels coming down from heaven on this side, uh, maybe, uh, I think uh, uh, Mary uh, on this side had the little, uh, the glowing part, you know, those ancient uh, photographs or uh, uh, the pictures, you know, had. Uh, on this side, it, it looked like one of Jesus over here uh, uh, preaching to the, to the saints in hell, uh, it, it, they were just strange. They were just strange looking, you know. And I thought, you know, this woman's kind of out of place. Uh, she didn't. She didn't dress appropriate for uh, for something such as this. Uh, I didn't think. And uh, uh, but I thought, you know, maybe, maybe she maybe she's one of the homeless people that roams the streets down in that area. There's quite a few of them there. But I thought, you know, well, she needs to hear good preaching too. So anyway, so I just I went on in, found my seat uh, in the auditorium, big auditorium. A little stage down front, and this guy comes out and and uh, welcomes everyone. Lets us know that we're going to hear some great preaching this morning, and and I'm excited. And and he uh, uh, he introduces the first preacher, and uh, and she walks out. This woman that I'd met is the preacher, and and uh, and she she walks out, and she uh, she she is a wonderful preacher, and she is a great preacher. Uh, she is the pastor of a, a church in Denver, Colorado called uh, The House for All Sinners and Saints, to which uh, she describes as uh, her congregations consist of, of drug users, prostitutes, felons, uh, alcoholics, depressives, and cynics, uh, which uh, all to she refers as her own people uh, and accidental saints. And I thought about that uh, when I read our scripture for today because that's where our, our uh, particular scripture takes place. It takes place in the temple in Jerusalem, a place for all sinners uh, and, and saints. Uh, this is the setting uh, that Jesus chose uh, to tell this parable about the uh, Pharisee and the tax collector. So I want to take you there this morning to the 18th chapter of Luke. Uh, and I'll begin reading on uh, verse 9. Hear the word of the Lord. He also told them this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast Twice a week, I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble uh, themselves will be exalted. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So you can tell by my uh, opening story 
uh, that in that particular situation, I was more like the Pharisee uh, than the tax collector because I was judging uh, the woman by just her outward appearance. Uh, but you know, there's been other times in my life when I've been more like the tax collector and uh, uh, bowed uh, uh, before God and, and um, cried out for mercy. A poor sinner. And thinking about these two scenarios, uh, uh, I want to suggest to you, to you this morning that uh, all of us are like that. All of us alternate between uh, being a Pharisee and being a tax collector. Uh, some days we feel pretty good about ourselves, and, and I don't think that's a bad thing uh, uh, to feel good about yourself. You need to feel good about yourself. We just don't need to let it go to our head uh, like the Pharisee. Uh, the other days we, we don't feel so good, uh, and we beat ourselves up. Uh, and that's, that's not so good, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes we just need, to, we don't feel good about ourselves and we need to uh, humble ourselves before God and cry for mercy. And, and I believe we're like that. Uh, so what I want to do this morning is I want to look at these two characters, uh, these uh, fictitious characters, but really uh, uh, had uh, real life positions in first century uh, Palestine and, uh, and, uh, and see where we can find ourselves within Jesus' story. You know, Pharisees get a bad rap through the, throughout the Gospels, uh, more so in Luke, I think. Luke just doesn't care for Pharisees very much. Uh, but they were really uh, model church leaders. Uh, they were uh, very devout in practicing uh, their faith. Uh, think of Nicodemus and, and think of uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Both of them were, uh, were Pharisees. Uh, they, were, they made it their business to try to figure out uh, uh, who Jesus was and what he was about. And, and uh, uh, if you know the story of those two uh, Pharisees, they, they actually uh, took Jesus down from the cross and, and put him in the tomb. Uh, and so uh, uh, basically the, the people hearing this story would, would think pretty highly of Pharisees uh, when they heard the story. Uh, but uh, how, what we want to know, how, how will we compare to this Pharisee uh, mentioned in this story? So let's look at it beginning in verse 11. Uh, because this Pharisee thanks God that he's not a thief. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I thank God that I'm not a thief. I could check, I could check that one. Uh, he thanks God that he's not a, a rogue. Uh, the Common English Bible uh, calls that an evildoer. So I'm, I'm going to check that for me. You do what you want. But I'm, I, I, th I thank God that I'm not an evildoer. Uh, uh, he, he thanks God that he's not an adulterer. Uh, and I, I thank God that I'm not an adulterer. That saves me from having two black eyes from, from Jan. And, uh, and it keeps me uh, uh, a little morally uh, right. Uh, and so I, I'm going to check that. Uh, let's see. Uh, then he thanks God that he's not even like this tax collector over here. And so, you know, so we're going to call that judging. We're going to call that judging others, and, and you, I confessed I did that, so I, I've got to check that. That's, I believe that's where he messed up. Uh, that's where he messed up his good record, uh, uh, but we're like him, so, so, so we check that. You know, we could put other words uh, in that particular spot. Uh, we, could, uh, we could look at Galatians 5, and we know in Galatians 5 is where Paul lists the... Uh, uh, works of the flesh, and we could look through that list beginning on Galatians 5.19, and, and uh, uh, there's fornication, impurity, uh, licentiousness, uh, idolatry, uh, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, uh, anger, quarrels, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, uh, carousing. You know, I thank God that I'm, I'm not uh, uh, like those, you know. Uh, we could even use more contemporary words uh, in our society. We, I thank God that I'm not uh, a child molester. Uh, I thank God that uh, I'm not addicted to pornography like uh, it's getting to be a, a big issue in our world. Uh, uh, that I don't abuse drugs and alcohol. Uh, I mean, we could, we could add a lot of, a lot of things to Jesus' list here. Uh, so, and so uh, I don't think it's a bad thing that we thank God that we're not like that. Uh, uh, as long as we, we don't judge the other. But let's, let's go on. Let's look at verse 12 here. Uh, let's see, the Pharisee, he, he fasts twice uh, a week. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to put an X on that one. Uh, you know, the, the law required the Jewish people to fast uh, uh, once a year on the Day of Atonement. Uh, the, the real devout Jewish people would, would uh, fast on Mondays and Thursdays twice a week, and, and so this Pharisee does. 
uh, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, he was big on fasting. He believed that we should, we should fast uh, regularly. Um, uh, you know, we, we may fast during Lent. We give up something for Lent. Uh, uh, most of the time I add a, a spiritual uh, discipline uh, during Lent instead of giving up something. Uh, uh, I fast when I go on my spiritual retreat uh, uh, for three days. And so, uh, but uh, twice a week, that's, that's going to the extreme here. Uh, in, uh, in discipline, in, in his uh, faith. Uh, let's continue. Still in verse 12, the, the Pharisee gives uh, a tenth of all his income. So uh, you, you may check that or you may X that. Uh, uh, many years ago, Jan and I made the commitment that uh, if we were in town and we were healthy, we would be in church. Uh, no exception. Uh, and we also made the commitment that uh, when we received our paychecks from the church or in the school, 10% uh, of that, a tenth of that, went back to the church. And so we, we've been faithful in that. Uh, but that's not the norm. If you, if you research uh, across all denominations, Christian denominations in the United States, uh, the average Christian, uh, the, or one who claims the name, uh, gives less than 2.5% uh, back to the church or, or to the church. And so uh, the Pharisee, uh, he, he, he goes the extra mile here uh, because they weren't required to, to uh, give a tenth on everything, just certain, certain uh, items. So that's the Pharisee. You know, uh, if we're honest with ourselves, uh, uh, um, if we were like the Pharisee, uh, we would be pretty good uh, and, and devout in our faith, I, th I think. If our whole church modeled uh, this Pharisee, I think we would be the exception of all other churches. Uh, except for the fact that we would be judgmental. Uh, and if you remember in verse 11, uh, the Pharisee judged the tax collector, and that wiped out all the good that the Pharisee had done, as if, uh, as if you, were, you had a religious checklist and you were checking things off, which uh, some or, or many of the Pharisees would do. Uh, but that's not the way it works. Uh, but that one flaw revealed the true nature of the Pharisee's heart. As Jesus prefaced uh, for his parable uh, for some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. And if you remember a few weeks ago, I, I quoted a, a Barna research uh, study that said that non-church people, if you remember non-church people, uh, the reason they give for not going to church is because uh, they believe church people are too judgmental. Uh, that's the Pharisee. Uh, it's, it's a big issue. It was a big issue in first century. It's a big issue in the, in the 21st century. Uh, but that's, that's the Pharisee. Uh, that, that revealed the Pharisee's heart, which is what condemned him, I believe. And I also think that's why uh, Weber's church uh, in Denver, Colorado, the house for all sinners and, and uh, saints is, is so successful and packed every Sunday is, and, and have uh, numerous activities during the week is because they're, they're open and accepting to all uh, sorts of people. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a desperate need in the hearts and minds of all God's children to feel wanted and to feel valued and to feel needed. Uh, and, and so uh, that's why the house for all sinners and, and uh, saints is, is packed. Uh, she told us at the end of her, her preaching that uh, she said, you know, if you're ever in Denver, Colorado, and you, and you get the desire to come to my church, don't do it. She said, because we can only hold 500 people and it's packed uh, to the doors uh, every Sunday. And if you show up as a spectator, somebody who really needs it can't get in. Uh, and so uh, she has a... a a, a valuable ministry uh, in that area. All right, let's look at the uh, let's look at the tax collector for a moment here. You know, it, it, like I told the children, it would be a surprise uh, to everyone if a, if the tax collector walked into church. And you may know some people that it would be. I've, I've talked to people and tried to get them to come to church and they, and they would say, oh God, pe people would fall over in the pews if they saw me come into church. Or the, the roof would cave in on me if I came to church. Uh, that's, what, that's what the people would think about the tax collector uh, in this story. Uh, they, would, they would just fall over in the pews if they saw a tax collector come into church. But he came to the church. Uh, he, he, he went into the temple. Now he was considered a traitor to his own people. Uh, he was employed by the Roman uh, government, the Roman Empire, which often uh, uh, used temple funds for, 
for government uh, projects, which didn't set very well with the religious leaders. Uh, his salary would be a what uh, that above the tax that he would collect from his own people, and, and many of the tax collectors were very rich. That didn't set well uh, with them. He had a certain power over the people, uh, uh, which uh, some abused. Uh, he, he had status in the community. Uh, uh, they were not oppressed or uh, marginalized like the other 98%, uh, and they were known to uh, show no mercy. And so uh, he, he, he wasn't liked. That would be an understatement here. But in, in their own way, I believe, uh, the tax collectors were, were some who trusted in themselves uh, that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Uh, and the people hated them for it. So what the tax collector had going for him, according to Jesus' story, is that he humbled himself. And he did go to church. He went to the temple. And he, he seemed uh, to be sincere in his faith. He, he went off by him, himself. He, he didn't feel worthy enough to be associated uh, among the other people. Of course, he was a Gentile, and, and the Pharisee was a Jew. They, they had separate parts of the temple anyway, so they couldn't, uh, he couldn't go where the Pharisee was to start with. But, but he, he, he might, maybe he found a, a dark corner, and he, he just huddled down in that corner to, to pray when, when most people would, would hold their hands out and look up to heaven when they prayed. Well, he, he, just, he couldn't lift his head to heaven. Uh, he, he just huddled down, kept to himself, and he cried out in mercy uh, and, and prayed this, this deep, uh, sincere prayer. And, you know, I believe, and it's been my experience, that deep, sincere, and agonizing prayer moves the heart of God in a miraculous way, in a powerful way. Uh, that's, that's been my experience. Uh, if you read the Psalms, the Psalms are, are full of prayers for people who did that very thing, that prayed in this way, poured their hearts out to God. Jesus, Jesus prayed uh, that way. Uh, that type of prayer just moves, moves the heart of God. And, 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 and that's the type of prayer we find uh, the tax collector praying in Jesus' story. John Bunyan, who was a 17th century uh, preacher, Puritan preacher, uh, he described prayer as a sincere, sensible, uh, sensible, uh, affectionate pouring out of the heart or soul to God. And in Psalm 62, 8 says, uh, Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Jesus' tax collector uh, is described as a, a sinner who, who prays that type of prayer. Uh, the Pharisee, on the other hand, uh, he was very devout in his religious action, but his heart uh, was far from God. His heart was far from God. Psalm 51, verse 17 says, The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, will you, you will not be despised. Therefore, Jesus ended his parable uh, by telling us that the tax collector was justified. Uh, he, was, he, he was made right with God uh, in his prayer rather than the Pharisee. And he, he ends by saying, For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. So which of the two uh, might you identify uh, with this morning? Which of the two... Uh, did you identify with? Now, uh, don't answer because I don't think that you can choose one way or the other. Because uh, if you say that, you know, uh, I'm like the Pharisee, then uh, when, you, when we do that, we judge the tax collector. And if you say, well, I, I'm like the tax collector, then if you do that, you, you've judged the Pharisee. Jesus' parable is actually a trap. Uh, you're trapped either way. Uh, and, and the parable reveals the, the, the true nature uh, either, either way you go. It, it reveals our true nature. Uh, so how, how might we be saved? It, it's not by uh, having a religious checklist like the Pharise some of the Pharisees thought, you know, and uh, uh, even, though, uh, 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 even though they had Christian action there, it, was, uh, it, was, it revealed the heart. It, it was just a checklist. Uh, no, we're, we're saved by God's amazing grace. 
God's prevenient grace that woos us into a relationship, uh, God's justifying grace that makes us right uh, before God, and then, and then God's uh, sanctifying grace that, that uh, uh, continues that, that holy work within us, that moves us closer and closer to Christian uh, perfection, as John Wesley uh, would say. So I don't know about you, but uh, for me, uh, I think I'm going to strive to live like the Pharisee in my devotion and action. Uh, and I want to be like the tax collector in, in uh, being uh, humbling myself before God and seeking God's mercy uh, and grace uh, when I mess up and judge someone or, or uh, one of the other many sins that I might fall under. Um, that's, that's just for me. Uh, in her book, uh, yes, I, I bought her book. Uh, in her book, on the back, Nadia Bolts Weber, she describes herself. She says uh, that she's uh, angry, she's an angry, uh, uh, tattooed and profane, stand-up comic turned pastor stubbornly, uh, sometimes hilariously resisting the God she feels called to serve. Uh, but God keeps showing up in the least likely of people and and she lives and worships alongside these accidental saints as she is swept into first-hand encounters with God's grace. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the tax collector and the, the uh, Pharisee and, and allowing us to find our place in the midst of that story. Uh, Father, you are an amazing God, an awesome God, uh, but you're our God. Uh, whether we are, are sometimes a saint, sometimes a sinner, uh, or both combined at all times, would read us a little bit better. But we are your people, and we're here today because we love you. And we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.